what is going on guys welcome back to the channel critical overload here so we're talking about scream 6 in this video here again today so we're going to be talking about this uh estimated runtime that's available online for you to see related to the length of the upcoming six entry in the iconic franchise and we'll be talking about uh gail weathers courtney cox rather courtney cox's role as the executive producer of the film and what that could potentially mean so as it relates to the runtime the runtime for Scream 6 is estimated to be 1 hour and 58 minutes, 118 minutes. If that is actually what it ends up being, that will then make it the second longest entry in the franchise, right behind Scream 2. It would be then also dethroning Scream 3, I think, which currently holds the length of second longest entry in the series. So when it comes to that, the runtime, I know many of us, myself included, were hoping and praying you'd see something that was at least on the same level as Scream 2 in length or something slightly longer than Scream 2 in length. And I'm sure there's probably a cut like that that is that long. It's just, of course, the fact when it comes down to the, to the editing and the trimming down of what might be left out and certain deleted scenes that, of course, we will see in special features um, and the things that many people might argue should have been left in the movie. We probably have a two hour cut of this movie out there somewhere, but we'll just never get to see it in its in its original form because, of course, they've edited and cropped out whatever they've cropped out and decided was not needed or unnecessary or just felt like a felt like a. Uh, just like band-aids to the to the runtime like unnecessary things that do nothing to move the plot forward in any real shape way form or fashion probably but uh they can still accomplish a lot in a runtime like this because again it would be the second longest that would probably make the actual movie itself i would hope an hour and 50 52 minutes 53 minutes even and then leave the remaining minutes left for your for your credits um they could do that so they can accomplish so much they can firstly most importantly since they're going to get to shine this movie flesh out Tara's friends let uh jasmine mason jenna let that entire trio of characters that are left from Terrace friend group that of course were not utilized to the way i hope they would be in screen five even though they were underutilized they all still shined and their personalities came through enough for us to go for enough for me anyway and, and i know a few of you to garner interest and connect with them and want to see more of them now you're going to get that so they definitely need to use this time to give us that focus on those three focus on their dynamic focus on how they're coping with what they just had to go through in the fifth movie with their friends and then of course we have sam carpenter who we know this is her story these these are her kids in a way I, I just always find it interesting to look at this story that way she's still protecting the kids that she's been protecting since they were actually babies because she's been babysitting everyone it's, it's, and of course for tara being her sister uh she's been protecting tara since she was a baby as well so want to see more sam's dynamic learn about this rumor she's dealing with how that impacts her life where that takes her in the movie and then of course you have your new characters which will of course add to the new friend group tara chad and mindy have uh you have liana liberardo's character you have jack champion's character seeing how they all are intertwined into this and then of course there's devin nicota's character seeing how they all add to the dynamics of our three woodsboro teen survivors um and what they are going to be like on college on the college campus at blackmore university uh i know some people already forced to assume and think that devin is mindy's girlfriend some people also probably think devin could be chad's girlfriend uh some people are thinking that there is something going on between josh shaguer's character well not even think it's because of the audition tape there's clearly something going on between josh shaguer's character and uh melissa barrera's character again sam carpenter so we have so much we could do with an hour and 58 minutes and then of course obviously when you're d utilizing your time to build up those characters like that it will then make some of their deaths a lot more emotionally devastating than others i would hope not to say that in the screen movies in the past that they've always done a good job at building up characters to make their deaths emotionally devastating some deaths though yes do hit a little bit harder than others because you became so invested in that character it could be a person who was saved up until the very final act and then they die like a jennifer jolie i would say whose death i know does not sit well with several different several different members of the fandom because she was such a likable character so then when her death happened it was just you know one of those deaths that had it held meaning because you cared about her you liked her character whereas a lot of the other deaths from the people you really didn't spend too much time with or you very you got to know very little about 
them. You're like, well, I don't, I, you could care less. They're just adding to the body count. So hopefully we get some of the characters like that who are not just there for the body count, but their deaths actually make you feel some type of way. And not even the deaths, maybe even the, the circumstances that you have these survivors in can make you feel some type of way, given that one of them must be dying in the movie, right? So anything that has to do with Ghostface chasing them around and just getting you on the edge of your seat and having you just wincing in terror because you think one of these people are about to die that you've gotten to know and love after they've been established in five now they've been fleshed out even further in six but now one of them is clearly going to die it's going to be something that hopefully breaks your heart that's what i would love to see from this movie when you have all these characters some of these character deaths i would hope shatter our hearts and, and at least if they're not dying the circumstances they find themselves in will just be very nerve-wracking the entire movie because of the mindset you're going into it thinking no one not everyone's gonna be able to make it out alive but just to jump into uh the and of course with the runtime pace it all correctly so that way you can at least have a proper uh non-rushed conclusion where the killer is of course going to give their monologue explain what they're doing this that and the third and then get killed probably but just to jump into gail weathers courtney cox's executive producing role and what people think this means for gail weathers in the movie gail weathers courtney cox is marked as a executive producer for scream six now i'm going to leave a link to where this information is coming from for not only the runtime but also this executive producer role for her uh She's an executive producer, so some people think this means that Courtney Cox's character of Gail Weathers is going to make it out of the movie alive because she could have had some type of input on the narrative directions for her character. Uh, I mean, honestly, I think she deserves it. I think she deserves it. I know many people are using this to turn it into more bitching and moaning about something else, but speaking in respect to Courtney Cox, I think she deserves this. I think she deserves to oversee anything going on with Gail Weathers. I think she's earned that. If that's what this means for her role, executive producers can do a lot of things that might have nothing to do with the script, but that's the mindset right now. Because she's the executive producer, people think that this means she will survive Scream 6. She could still die because it could again be something that ultimately she wanted to do. You could have her, you could literally see Gail Weathers die. The fandom goes into an uproar once again, and then Courtney Cox will come out and explain that it was her decision. She's the one who came up with it. She wanted to do this. She, you know, th that would be something that completely just also shatters that bubble for anyone who wants to overreact and not really think outside the box. <laughs> but let me know what you guys think about this down in the comment section below. If you haven't already, of course, make sure you subscribe, turn on post notification, take numbers of video in the description. I'll have links on my social media accounts. I am on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there, of course. Let me know if there's any movies, news, or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future. And with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.